Welcome to Being Humankind, with your hosts Brian, Mike, and Neely. We explore what it means to be human in a time of disconnection. When was a time that you felt judged? Hmm. (laughs) When was a time I felt judged? As a black man, there are times when I can walk into a place and I can sense judgment. I say that because of what we do in terms of who we are. And people have a false image of the largesse of men of African descent, black men. And as a result of this, this incorrect perception, you walk into a space and you may not be immediately taken seriously. And when you chat, I don't, I don't forget her, had a woman once tell me, quote, you manifest inadequacies that others possess. You manifest inadequacies that others possess. And when she said that, and I was just kind of like, ah, yeah, yeah. But I thought about it for a moment. And I remember I was in a laundromat. I was dating a young lady. This was when I was in Atlanta. And (laughs) I, my mom and dad gave us a really solid foundation how to care for a household. I want to preface this story by saying that first. And I'm folding my bed linen. And a young lady with whom I was doing my laundry, we were dating at the time, I folded the fitted sheet. And I folded the fitted sheet such that it fit on top of the flat sheet as it was folded. She broke down in the laundromat and began crying and said, quote, you can fold the fitted sheet I have nothing to offer you. And I'm looking because I'm in the laundromat and all the other women in the laundromat are looking at me like I'm a lout. And I was dumbfounded. I go home, I call my mom. She answers the phone and I say, mom, you did this to me. And she says, what do you mean? And I explained to her what happened. And she simply replied, well, the dad and I wanted to make sure that you guys could take care of yourselves. So people don't see that. They don't see that foundation. But what they see is what's in their head that they've accepted. So I know that. I know walking into certain spaces, that judgment can be there. It's not a guarantee that it'll be there. But I've been situated enough in my own self to understand that when it's there, how to navigate it. And... I'm going to be me. I'm just going to be me. I am a black man. I've gone to university several times and finishing my doctoral dissertation, studying mystical experiences among Freemasons and Rosicrucians, understanding of consciousness. And my wife and I help people to have that experience, but others don't know that. And so when I walk into those situations, I can feel it, but I don't let it overwhelm me. So you can feel something, but not let it overwhelm you because you realize, as I said earlier, that that person just doesn't know themselves. They've accepted that the social constructs are the way things are supposed to be. Heather Dalmage refers to it as tripping on the color line. Du Bois says in the 20th century, the problem of the color line. I would argue the 21st century, it's the same thing. But when you begin to realize who and what you are and that your skin color is merely a function of the intelligence within your physiology, interacting with the intelligence in the environment, and your skin is the meeting place between the two, you realize the concept of race, this idea of inferiority and superiority is bollocks. You realize that. And it's in having that realization that even though you know you're being judged, you know the place from whence it came. You know that it comes from a place of not knowing. And at that point, compassion can develop an opportunity to share can develop. And as I think it was ludicrous in one of the early, um, it was a Fast and Furious movie, 
when they walk in to buy the cars and the salesperson was being rather interesting. And he says, oh, I think it's time for a lesson. And so they bought all the cars and the guy was being obsequious to him at that point. But again, it's an opportunity to share because a lot of people just don't know. They just don't know. They are a victim of their own lack of understanding of history. So yes, you feel it, but you know how to navigate it. Now, as long as they stay over there and feel what they want to feel, we're fine. But you would probably not want to come to my face and say things or put a hand on me. That would be a different conversation. 